keep with all of it. I know, Mike, you had, what, 18 or 19 at last count, something like that? Or was it more than that now? That's, that's not even the specialty batches, Vicky. I know, right? I can't keep track, dude. You have more means than God, you know what I mean? Yeah, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why I say if I presented that business plan to a bank, they'd laugh at me. Yeah, um, right. I, I'm sure, at least initially, they won't be able to produce all of those. I mean, uh, but I, I know they want to experiment and do specialty batches too. So uh, we'll have to. I think I'll leave that up to Sasan. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the good the good news is we you know we just started moving um, a lot of Mike's vessels over to Talkeetna, and um, a lot of the, our brewing vessels um, translate really nicely. I mean, we're like like Mike just said, we just unitanked um, our first batch of Razzery, uh Gosh, I want to say about four weeks ago, and that went straight into um, one of our first fermentation vessels we ever had so um i I think we you know taking some of the vessels that mike had to make the 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 one-off and the the more creative stuff but being able to take the the the, you know the razzery i think is mike's best-selling mead and we can translate that over into the brewing vessels and, and and make it there so i'd i'd like to i i think for us the first thing is we just got to get our, our feet under the ground and get the confidence to know that we're able to maintain the consistency that Mike had before and, and duplicate his and I love those so I, I would hate to see them go away personally okay we just cut out there for just a second. I had uh, uh, Hamish trying to call in, so I'm going to bring Hamish on. I think he might ask some questions. Hamish is in Australia. Ah, okay. So I'm going to add him to the call right now. So, uh, AJ, go ahead on with uh, asking them. Sure. Uh, my next question was um, for both of you, actually. Do you do a lot of experimentation to fine-tune each of your recipes, or do you just sort of make stuff up and see how it turns out? Um, well, I'll take that one, I guess. Um, yes, D, all of the above. Um, <laughs> I've got um, um, several recipes that I, I did as a home brewer, um, that I kind of brought in, it's, and I knew I wanted to do those, and so I, and I do those. Um, I'm it's, so it's fairly; those are fairly stable recipes. However, I'm always looking to like tweak them just a little bit to make them just that little bit better, you know. Um, but I also do a lot of one-off experimental batches um, because it's some idea I had and I want to see how it works and and some of those obviously turn out a lot better than others uh, but I don't know that I've had any real bad failures there um, so uh, I do have a kind of core that have fairly stable recipes that I'm kind of looking to just make just a little better but I also do a lot of experimentation Okay, that's yeah. Fair. It's the same. It's the same for us. I mean, on 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 the beer front, we have have our core brands, and and we we have made some minor tweaks to those. Um, you know, we I guess for us, what the promise we made to ourselves and our customers was to try to make the best possible beer we can at any given time and and if we felt like there was a change that we were going to make to one of these brands that was going to make it taste better and and more enjoyable we were definitely not so set in our ways that we don't change a recipe even on a core brand especially if we think it's going to make the beer better and you know a lot of the processes that we go through they're they're kind of monotonous and redundant so anytime we could be creative and 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 do new and different stuff it's it's definitely a a lot of the fun that we have you know we got a a barrel program here where we're blending beers together and 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 working on um that so there's a lot of dynamic uh changing of recipes in our barrel program um and always just 
trying to come up with a new creative beer. We're, we're pretty fortunate in the sense that our brewery has a eight and a half barrel system, a 30 barrel. We even have a one barrel test batch system. So if, if someone doesn't have a shift dedicated to brewing, they're still kind of on the, on the clock. They're expected to go and brew on the one barrel system and continue being creative, even if it's not something we have before. And a lot of that ends up getting ramped up and done on the eight and a half barrel and then and then eventually goes to the 30 if it has enough traction so it's i yeah we, we're definitely trying to make new and different things every day okay thank you um i think hamish is on now yeah hamish can you hear us okay good afternoon there he is. Hey, Hamish, meet Mike and uh, and Sasan. Hello, oh, Hamish. Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Great. Cool to have you on the phone. Hey, excellent. My, my first question um, is actually for both of you, but we'll start with Mike. Um, what is your favorite mead personally? Um... I don't know that I have a favorite meat personally. Um, that's probably I'm, why he makes forty-seven different ones. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. I was going to say I'm, I'm really lucky that, um, and I have a, a, a pretty extensive cellar in in my home, and so I keep a lot of varieties of meat there, and I can just whatever suits my fancy at any particular time, go down and pull one of those out. I even have I have homebrewed meats back to ninety-nine in there still. Dang, and I thought uh, I was a hoarder. <laughs> so, uh, uh, not, I, don't, I don't really have a favorite. I, I, I can't even say that I prefer trads over melomels or methaglins. Um I'm kind of all over the map, which is the same way I am with beer. Um, I drink all kinds of beer. Um, Belgians, European, other Europeans, uh, hoppy IPAs. Although, I, 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 the Pacific Northwest hops seem to play havoc with my sinuses, so I'm, I'm less of a hop hit than a lot of people are, but uh, stouts, porters, um, session beers. I'm right there I'm, with you. I'm all over the map. A, I'm right there with you not being a hop head, Mike. I, I like Belgians and Heffies and, and, uh, and, and you know, because I'm a girl. Fruit beers. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> this, I gotta tell you, I'm with I mean, fruit beers. <laughs> no. But I was drinking this um, Twister Creek IPA here, and it really is my favorite beer. I'm not saying that um, because uh, we're partners here now. Um, there's another one um, made by a competitor here in town, but if I can't find Twister Creek in town, I can usually find it. And those two are my favorite IPAs, but they're, there's more of a standard IPA. They're not the big, overly bitter, overly hoppy IPAs. Uh, it's a really good, clean-drinking IPA. Cool. That's all? I, I, uh, when folks ask me that question, I, I usually say the mead or the beer that is in my hand at the time. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I suspect I'm like uh, a lot of folks out there. I just really enjoy uh, a wide girth and diversity of fermented products. And as long as it's well made, I just really enjoy trying anything that maybe I haven't had. And there are certainly the, the standard beers and, and meads that I like to go back to. I'm, I'm going to actually throw a shout out to Mike because he came over to our house uh, a few uh, weeks ago for dinner. And he brought um, Who's Your Pappy, which is um, uh, cellared in Pappy Van Winkle uh, bourbon barrels. And Mike could give you the, the the specs and details on it more, but I I'm I'm also um, I have a I guess a love for the brown liquids too, and so when Mike was able to sell her into a pappy uh, barrel, I I was pretty excited about that. So yeah. we had about half the bottle at my house, and then I brought it to work, and I enjoyed the rest with uh, a bunch of folks in the office. So. Um, uh, I will say that uh, recently that's one that I've really enjoyed is Who's Your Pappy? I haven't had that one yet, and Pappy Van Winkle's hard enough to get. I'll have to, Mike, if you've got a bottle of that laying around that, that that you're willing to part with, I'd love to try it. 
I'll bet you would. I'll bet you would. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> when you come down to the major cup, you know, bring one with you if you can. I, I, I think I think I brought one uh, this last time. Yeah, um, it was there, it was though. <laughs> yeah, you see how you are? That's what I get for that's what I get for getting blood clots in my lungs, damn me. Exactly. <laughs> what were you thinking? What was I thinking? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there will definitely be some there this next year, Vicky. Cool. I'll be there. I'm not going to miss it for anything. Okay. Uh, my my follow up was um, not going to work so well now because you, you you really don't have a, a favorite specifically. But um, of all the uh, ridiculous amount of meads you do make, which one has always has been your uh, well, I can tell you the top four are Razzly, uh, Marriage, Odin's Gift, and Desire. And I, I can tell you more about each of those if, if, if you want and we have the time. Go for it. Yeah, it, what, 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 uh, what is similar about them that you think might make them a, a good selling point? Well, Desire and Odin's Gift are traditional meads. Um, Desire is made with desert wildflower honey, uh, which has a little bit of a tartar character to it. Uh, Odin's Gift is just made with standard clover honey, um, but it, it's the honey taste that people who are new to mead um, can relate to because it tastes like the honey out of the honey bear except obviously it's not so sweet and it's 13 and a half percent alcohol uh, so it's semi-sweet uh, and I put a little French oak in it to help smooth things out a little bit um, so that's why people like that the desire is similar it's a semi-sweet also um, but it has a very different honey characteristic to it like I said it's a little tartar and brighter uh, than the clover honey uh, the two fruit meads I, uh, I, I don't know if I can tell you what it is about them that people like. Marriage is made um, with clover honey and um, blackberries and raspberries. Uh, and the two seem to complement each other very well in that. The raspberry is a little complicated. It's, it's like I said, it's a session mead, 6.5%. Uh, um, and it starts out as a sizer to which I add um, raspberries and tart cherries. Um, I think maybe part of the appeal to that is it, it, it is, has a lot of acidity from the apples, cherries, and raspberries, um, which kind of maybe reminds people a little more of, of a wine kind of thing. Um, but it's lower alcohol, so they can drink a lot of it without falling over. <laughs> Whereas the other one, you can't drink very much of it without falling over. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> now, if I could be as bold as Vicky, that's one I'd like to try. It's good. <laughs> it's really good. You've meddled with Razzery half a dozen times, haven't you, Mike? I, I, I think so, yeah. Um, I, uh, it's, I had a couple, well, I had four at one point that I was putting into kegs. Um, because a little bit of carbonation in them really brings out the flavors on them. But Razzery had enough flavor by itself that I just bottled it still. Uh, and, and it's probably, I haven't been able to keep up with production, actually, so I'm reasonably sure if I had kept up with production, it would be my best seller. Hmm. Oh, you mean that bottle I drank was it? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite, Vicky. <laughs> You make a girl panic here. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> we got 450 gallons in the tank. I'm pretty sure there'll be some next year. Which which raises the question, uh, Sasan, uh, you guys are tackling Razzery. Are you going to just focus on that one, or do you have a couple others that you want to go for next, if, if you're able to tell us that? I didn't know if that's a big secret or yeah we you know we we'd like to um, make uh, a, a, a whole variety of them and uh, again the the, the razzery just came um, to be first because that was where the demand was but given Mike's equipment that he has we we have the ability to do pretty much everything from a 16 barrel unitank all the way down to a 55 gallon drum so um, that's just the starting point for us, but, um, you know, kind of the, everything stands before us at this point, so we can, we have the luxury of picking and choosing where we want to go next. Nice, nice. 
It'll be fun to see what you guys, you know, what you guys decide to do with it. Are you going to...